If you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything at all. I'm gonna say some things. You know, for every Spider-Man 2, there's a Fantastic Four. For every Iron Man, there's a Catwoman. For every Dark Knight, there's a Batman and Robin. I could do this all day. Sony pulled it off with the animated Spider-Verse movies. I think maybe they got cocky. Sony struck gold with Spider-Man 1 and Spider-Man 2. Kind of started to lose it at 3. The Amazing Spider-Man was pretty good. I just found it kind of distracting to have a brand new Spider-Man so close to the last one. And I really didn't care for The Amazing Spider-Man 2. They wanted to do so much, set up so much, they forgot to focus on the actual movie they were making. They let Marvel take a crack at it and the rest is history. But Sony still hangs on to everything else. Venom, Morbius, I didn't even touch. Kraven's coming up, but I'm, I'm really not excited about it. But first, we have to get through Madam Web. Oh, hey. <laughs> be, be cool, be cool. This disaster. This movie opens with a super pregnant Constance Webb in the jungles of Peru while being very pregnant, effing around with magical Peruvian spiders with healing abilities. She finds a magic spider, but she's betrayed by her guide, Ezekiel, who takes the spider and becomes the bad guy. Spider people come help. Just go with it. Just go with it. But Connie dies but they let her get bitten by one of their magic spiders and her baby lives, eventually become Madam Web, played by Dakota Johnson. She's an EMT who starts having visions. I knew he was gonna die. That's so Raven did it better. You remember Ezekiel, he becomes an evil Spider-Man. Ugh, I'm calling him Spooderman. Maybe I'm not cut out for this. He dreams about three women in Spider-Man costumes killing him. Most people having that dream would kind of go in a kinkier direction if you catch my drift. They're killing him in his dreams, so he goes out looking for them so he can kill them first. Like you do. By the way, this only happens in visions or dreams. These shots in the trailer don't actually happen in the movie. They never get powers, they never suit up, but they're supposed to because it was in a vision. And on Sony's soon to be revised Spider-Verse roadmap, Zeke's plan is to find these women he only sees in visions. They're wearing masks. They don't have power, so they have no reason to be wearing these masks, so how is he gonna find them? Oh, he finds them pretty easily. Oh, uh, Adam Scott is Ben Parker. Yeah, Uncle Ben. Totally wasted. Cassie has visions of these same three girls in danger, so she tries to protect them by kidnapping them. There's a scene where the girls do a coyote ugly table dance at a diner and the employees do nothing. There's a scene where Cassie teaches the girls CPR because that way, later in the movie, when someone needs CPR, they'll have it covered and nobody will be like, how did they know CPR? This answer's for you, neckbeard. Cassie leaves the girls she's protecting, <laughs> more like helping run away, and she travels to Peru, which seems to be like a one bus ride away, to exposition dump with the spider people. I could explain it, but it won't make any more sense. Spooderman is crawling around in a suit that looks very much like Spider-Man, with similar powers, yet nobody comments on the similarity. That means Spider-Man does not exist in this universe. Yeah, I guess. Okay, fine. We're in the Spider-Verse. Anything can happen. Fair enough. But I feel like this movie is relying on Spider-Man for marketing. You're introducing new characters by introducing them next to well-known characters. Spider-Man doesn't even show up. Hell, even the promised Spider-Women don't factor in and visions don't count. There might be a Peter Parker at the end, a baby is born, but they don't confirm the name. Let's try that again. This movie is just tease, tease, tease. All of this climax is on the rooftop of a fireworks factory, so of course fireworks have to start going off around them. And Cassie finally masters her superpowers, where she can suddenly split herself into multiple copies, which makes zero sense. The spider people told her that she could be in many places at once. And I took this to mean mentally, metaphysically, you know, she's visions, she can astral project or go other places, fine. Not actually manifest a copy of herself that can actually pull someone up off a cliff three times. And why didn't she just make copies of herself go wail on Spooderman while they were fighting? It could have been the, like the end of Death Proof. 
Ben Spooderman is killed by a giant Pepsi sign. I thought Coke was a killer. And he is squashed like a like a spider. Hell, you find a theme, you stick with it. Cassie falls into the river, gets blinded by fireworks that work too well underwater, and almost drowns. But remember, CPR for the win. Good thing we had that scene, wasn't it? An EMT should really learn how to swim. Cassie is now blind, fully clairvoyant, and wheelchair bound. She's a head of hair away from Professor X. And she'll be the three spider women's guide when they get powers. Eventually. Still doesn't happen here. Sony, you tease. I get it. This is Madam Web's story. The spider women are mainly a marketing gimmick and Sony's attempt to yet again set up a future movie in their cinematic universe. It's honestly like the least weird thing that's happened all day. You could see them at the end praying for a sequel that's probably not coming. Dakota Johnson is seriously phoning it in here. She's a block of wood in this. I haven't seen her in very much other stuff, but here she just felt like she gave up. I think she lost faith during filming. Her press tour isn't exactly pumping this movie up. She's talked about constant script changes. I'm not at all shocked. This movie is janky, it's disjointed, it's clumsy, it's clunky, it's... I feel like it was edited with a hatchet. There's some nice chemistry with the ladies bonding, but that's a drop in the bucket. Adam Scott is fine with what he's given, but it's hard to care about any of these characters. They mostly talk about their backstories, and they're kind of shoveled in at the most inopportune times. It's like, oh, even one of the characters says, don't give us your life story. The story is cliched, the main character gets powers, can't control them until the end when it really counts, nothing new here. Badly written dialogue, it's not even cheesy or campy, it's just dumb, juvenile. And I'm, I'm trying not to piss on this movie too much, but oh, come on, you're Sony Pictures. You have Spider-Man, one of the most popular IPs in history and you are fumbling it dudes it's just dumb clunky exposition people telling backstories to people who already should know this the effects are just okay nothing noteworthy i mean it's not the best cg but enough to get the point across but it's just uh, it's just not engaging the camera work and editing is all over the place madam web is 1b and i'm Seriously being generous here. The villain is a bore. The story is a bore. And the characters are just flat. You can see them trying to pump some life into them, but they're just flat. They don't know what to do with any of them. I try to find the fun in every movie, but this one is just joyless. It kind of made me mad. This is one to skip. It's not even drunken watch party bad. You want drunken watch party bad? Watch Dakota Johnson in Fifty Shades of Grey. Now that's a good time. If you've seen this movie, I'm sorry. And if I spoiled it for you, consider yourself lucky. Thank you so much for watching. Like, subscribe, comment the bell. You know, the usual YouTube stuff. This is The Newbie, and I'll see you later, kids. Toodles.